Well, are we almost at the end of human history? Discover the shocking truth as Dr. Michael Yusuf shares what Jesus said about the last days and how it relates to what's happening today. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, are we seeing signs of the last days? How do we know what will happen in the end times? And what is the source where we get our information on this topic? Well, today, with the help of our special guest, we're going to look at these questions and unpack what Jesus himself said on this very subject. But first, joining around the table is April Simons. How are you? I'm doing good. And are, I think we're kind of living in the end times. You're kind of seeing <laughs> signs of the time? Maybe so. Could you think five years ago that we would be where we are right now? No, I, I can't. And I, I, it sad, saddens me sometimes to see what our kids have to face with oh, all this. Right. And But you know what? There's hope for us. There is, because yes. God's still on the throne. Yep, amen. Dorothy right. Newton, yes, he yes. has not fallen off the throne. No, he has <laughs> not. You know, and, and there's a scripture scripture um, quoted Dorothy Newton that says, be ready so you won't have to get ready. That's right. <laughs> quoted Dorothy Newton. I like that. Kendra Kelly Dean, he's hey. with us. And he's we, with us. we've read the end of the book, right? We know. We know what happens. We win. Yay! Yes, we do. <laughs> but it is all my life. That's what I've heard. His coming, his coming, his coming. But now, I mean. It's like, come. Coming. <laughs> he is coming. Come quickly, God. Now. Yeah, that's right. I love it. <laughs> Susanna Lamb. <laughs> My beautiful daughter in love, how are you? I'm so excited to be here. I love talking about the end times because, you know, I'm you ready. Do. You Let's are. Let's go. All right, Cindy Murdoch. <laughs> do you remember that song that, um, who was it that used to sing? People get ready. <laughs> Jesus is coming. Soon we'll be going home. Well, we really <laughs> feel that way now. Uh, well, he is the president and founder of the ministry, <laughs> Leading the Way. He's here to talk about his new book, Is the End Near? Please welcome our dear friend, Dr. Michael Youssef. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. You look so nice. Yeah. Yeah. You're there and you're there in your suit there. Very sharp. Well, most of the members of my church think that my wife dresses me. Yeah. <laughs> because they think I'm a Yahoo. I wouldn't know how to do that. <laughs> and so she gets up and said, he dresses himself. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So you actually great. dress yourself. You do a great job. Yes. Well, think about it. Wars, famine, and rampant deception are the signs of a coming disaster or even the apocalypse. If so, how can we know for sure? Take a look. Jesus said, at the end of time, there will be a great tribulation. This tribulation is going to encompass the whole globe. globe. Only the Father knows the day. For centuries, people have theorized when the end times will come upon us. Decade after decade, books have flown off the shelves as readers search for answers to questions like, do we know how current global events will play into God's end time plan? Is there evidence for potential apocalyptic events that could trigger unprecedented natural disasters? Is it possible for Christians to be deceived by the Antichrist? Many seek to find the truth, but have we thought to ask the one who will see us through that difficult time in the face of war, disasters, famines, and persecution? The world seems to be crumbling around us, and only one holds the answers for peace and hope in the last days. So are we living in the last days? What signs should we be looking for? And what did Jesus actually say on this topic? Well, Dr. Yusuf is here today to help us answer these important questions. Thank you for being here. What a pleasure to be with you, ladies. And uh, I, I always cherish my time with you all. Well, we love having you. You're such a blessing. Of course, the book, it's a forward by our friend, Dr. R.T. Kendall, Kendall, who's yes. been here many times. Yes. Uh, what Jesus told us about the last days and is the end near? Now, you know, you really preach the whole counsel of the Bible as a pastor. Absolutely. Um, and so this was kind of a first for you to kind of talk about end times, if you will. Why did you do that? Well, because I began to look at the world from a, a perspective of a social anthropologist rather than a theologian. But then I, everything in my compass is the Word of God. So I went back to the Word of God. 
And I didn't want to get into all the arguments and Christians have about the end times and this and that. I wanted to know what Jesus said. And I right. spent really a lot of time digging deep, looking in the Greek text, what is what are the important thing that our Lord is saying? And he is saying this in response to the disciples' question. In fact, they asked two questions. And a lot of people uh, confuse the two answers. Yes. They think it's all one and the same. Mm. And some people say, well, that was in 70 AD. It's all ha taken place. But the Greek makes it very clear when he talks about that day and those days. Yeah. Those words are very distinct. And so he said... Answer the first question, he said, yep, then no two stones are going to be mm. one on top of the other. And that happened in 70 AD with meticulous details. And then he said, but on those days, because they said to him, what's going to happen to this building and what are the signs of nearness of your return? Mm -hmm. So he answered the first question, then he asked the second question. And so as I dug deep into uh, Matthew 24, I came to you know, a very clear conclusion that what our Lord is saying in that chapter is global. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, and you know, I love America, but there's sometimes American preachers kind of, you know, the world rises and falls with America. Mm -hmm. But God is the God of the world. Yeah. He's the God right. of the universe. Yes, he is. And so you've got to look at things, events that are universally common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I began to lift up a mirror of the six things the Lord calls them, the signs of the labor pains before the birth of the baby. Does the word talk specifically about how Jesus would reveal himself? Mm -hmm. If Jesus is able to reveal himself Absolutely. to everyone yes. from yes. any religion and God loves all people, yes. that's yes. really a message we that's want right. to get across. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, uh, it's the love of God. It, the, the very familiar verse, for God so loved the world. Yeah, yeah. He didn't just love in a small group of people. He loved yeah. the world. Yeah. And the gospel is for the world. Mm. And when he sent him uh, uh, in the Great Commission, he, he says, ta ethna, which every ethnic group, the gospel will be preached to the end of the earth. He's going to be preached to every ethnic group. Same word again. And then the end will come. Yeah. And Revelation, uh, the book of Revelation talks about from every language, tribe, and nation. Yes. And I have traveled the world, literally circled it 67 times. Wow. And I'm preaching in India, and I'm preaching in the Middle East, and I, and I, I, I love all, all the, God's people are everywhere. They are in China. My goodness, the church in China is growing in leaps and bounds. Underground, mm -hmm. but it's growing. Yeah. And so... Everywhere. It is the largest church now. Yeah, of course. So what is one of the signs, or at least tell us a couple of the, the birthing pains where, where it really is clear that the end is near. Sure. Uh, you already alluded to one, which is the gospel is being preached to, to, the, uh, to uh, literally around the globe. And we're doing that every day. And, and we're seeing thousands of people coming to Christ. Uh, many of them uh, signing their own death warrant when they mm, come to Christ. So true. Uh, not sometimes by governments, but even family members. Yeah. And, but they see a vision of Jesus, and then they watch our Arabic program, and they said, he's talking about the one that I saw in my dreams. Wow. And then they write to us, and our follow-up team follow with them. So it's happening all over the globe. Um, one of the greatest uh, events, and I've preached to many large groups, but uh, in Sydney, Australia, last, just a few weeks ago, November uh, 27th, at the convention center, it was an evangelistic event. And uh, they had to be, get a ticket to get there. It was 3,500 people only can get tickets. But I gave the invitation. I have never given an invitation that in the first five seconds wow. before I even... In, normally, you kind of, you, you go a little bit longer. Yeah. People were running down the aisles. Wow. 350 yeah. people wow. came to respond yeah. to the gospel. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and as the Lord says, this is what I called you to do. And so the gospel is going around the world. But the other thing, the other sign, which breaks my heart, I really, I wish you could see me sometimes in my own private prayer time because I weep over this. The, the apostasy, the great apostasy. Yes. Yeah, People turning their backs on the gospel after they've preached the gospel. Yeah. That one thing I, I, I can't, continue in Futuro because I might lose it and, yeah. <laughs> and embarrass you all. But uh, really is Now we talk about all, all that, yeah. that yeah. stuff here. We don't, we don't shy away from it. I mean, yeah. it's so important I that know. 
we understand what the Word of God has to say yeah. and to stay true to yeah. that. That's the prayer of my heart. And I started preaching 51 years ago in Sydney, Australia. It was wow. in 1971, uh, 72 actually started. 1972, February 72. That's the beginning of the academic year there. And, um, and I've been preaching ever since. But I, I, I just think that these are the times when the, 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 the bride of Christ, the elect, uh, the, the, the church of Christ, N not the denomination, not the building churches, not the, mm -hmm. even the church we belong to, not as a pastor, and I love the church, but I'm talking about the church, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. the, the bride of Christ, yes. that he's going to present us blameless yes. to his Father. Yes. And so it is vitally important that we realize and we see those signs. We don't fear. I weep for them, but we're not fearing. We look up because our day of redemption is drawing nigh. And sad as it is to see these, you know, preachers who, mega church pastors who, somebody I knew in Maryland, I mean, he preached and, and books and millions of copies sold. And, and yet he got up one day and he said, I'm not a Christian anymore. Oh, wow. And this is happening more often. They call it deconstruction, yeah. but that's a nice way of, so this is a message for everyone. If you're watching today and you don't know him, all you have to do is call out on the name of the Lord and he will meet you right where you are. So um, what's another sign? Well, the signs in the heavens as we're seeing, in fact, uh, my research uh, team went into the NASA and, and began to find out some of the predictions are gonna happen. And uh, these are all part of that. And what are some of those? Well, I mean, they just had one um, uh, supposedly the size of a, a big truck hit uh, the Earth, a asteroid, a, 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 a asteroid, a asteroid yeah. thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and they're talking about one that is so huge that will literally half the Earth would, would burn. We're seeing r wars and rumors of wars. We always have wars, yeah. but now we're seeing some wars that looks not, that's not going to end. Yeah. Yeah. And there's and not just the, the Russia-Ukraine war, which, of course, we're concerned about sure. and praying for all involved in that. Yep. But there are a lot of wars that we're not even hearing about. 27 of them around wow. the world, we count wow. and last count. Wow. 27 wars that are going on, taking place. And there possibly is going to be a war between Egypt and Ethiopia over the Nile water and all those things that are happening all around us in uh, Afghanistan and, and so forth. And we don't, we don't even talk about these. But those are happening, and they're happening with... Um, uh, free, uh, increased frequency and uh, happening with uh, 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 closer and closer intervals, just like the labor pains mm -hmm. happen when, yes. uh, when, when the baby's mm -hmm. ready to be born. Yeah. And that's what drew my attention. Okay, we had all these signs before, but what is the Lord saying about this birth of the baby? Mm -hmm. He's saying that when you see them happening so fast, so quickly and, and more intense, then you know that the baby's about to be mm -hmm. born. And the, the truth is, the Bible tells us, uh, First Timothy, command rich men to give. Uh, Jesus said, don't store your treasures on this earth because it will worth or corrupt and so forth. Store it in heaven. So there is a command that we care for the poor, that we care for the oppressed, that we care. Yeah. That, look at the hospital movements, the library movements, the, the, the nursing movement. All of these things were started with missionaries yeah. who love Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, um, we talk about all of these labor pains because the Bible is very clear mm. that there is a great tribulation yep. period that's coming. Right. Talk about what is the great tribulation because, you know, there are people watching now that, um, you know, you're maybe not ready to meet the Lord. And that's why we're talking to you about mm -hmm. all of this. Okay. The Bible clearly tells us mm -hmm. about a tribulation period. Yep. So tell us yep. what will happen during that seven years. Well, the, 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 one of the things and one of the signs is uh, the famine. The, the, there's going to be, uh, in fact, uh, Revelation talk about uh, that um, the price of uh, ephah, of, of mm -hmm. grain, will be, and that's, that's basically a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. I mean, we're talking about the supply chain, and uh, during the pandemic, we couldn't get toilet paper or food and all those things. These were just only rehearsals mm -hmm. of what to come. Wow. And I really believe that believers should be prepared also, not, mm. you know, and, uh, and, 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 and prepare spiritually, emotionally, physically, 
because it's going to happen. The Antichrist is going to make sure that nobody buys or sells. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to benefit without having his mark. But there has to be a one world system in place. Absolutely, it started. And the Bible talks about that as well, a one world order. Yeah. And um, where you won't be able to buy or sell and there will be a mark that you must take if you are to buy or sell. I know that uh, April, we couldn't have ever imagined Mm -mm. that that we could see uh, the, the foundation of that being built and yet now we can we can say we see it. We see it. And I think about, you know, I, I didn't know this about my mom. She'll be 90 this year. At 13, she gave her heart to Jesus because she thought the world was ending. Yes. You know, all the signs back then. <laughs> yeah. And I think about, you know, it's it, it can be fearful for someone who hears yes. it. But yes. thank God at 13, now she's 90. I don't know the math, but she's been able to live in peace all those years. Amen. That's beautiful. And that's the thing. Like yeah. you said, Jenny, we can give our hearts to God. We don't have to worry. We have to be prepared. We yeah. have to be cognizant. But... You know, there's a certain peace that God's going to take care of us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and in, in the Bible, I mean, fear is mentioned like 365 right. times, yeah. you know, so we have, we can find great comfort in the Word yep. knowing that we don't have to fe- be fearful. Absolutely. But um, be ready. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, well, Paul names that spirit. Yes. Yes. Spirit of fear. It's mm. a spirit. Yeah. He names yeah. the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, that's not from God. That's right. Oh, right. Yes. And that's that scripture that says, God has not given yeah. us spirit of fear. a spirit of fear, right. yeah. but of power yeah. and of love yeah. and of a sound mind. mind. You yeah. think about how many people are suffering. I know you're a pastor's wife of anxiety. Mm. Oh, so Panic much attacks. fear. <sighs> so much fear and anxiety. And I just remember thinking when I was younger, you know, reading Revelation and everything, how it would say that people who knew God knew Jesus suddenly would reject him. And I couldn't process, like, how can you know him? Yes, His yes. faithfulness, his goodness, and love him, and then all of a sudden reject him. When you start rejecting the truth of the Bible, you're rejecting yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's true. And people, when they start picking out pieces of the Bible, fear comes in. Yeah. Anxiety comes in. Yeah. They don't remember their identity anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just mind-blowing yes. how quickly that happened. Yes. yes. You know, it's so important. Susie, you mentioned, of course, you were born in India, mm-hmm. and uh, the Lord brought you over here for my son (laughs) and gave me two beautiful grandchildren that are amazing. Um, But we recently took a trip to India during uh, Easter. Yes. And uh, we went to parts and you just saw a multitude of people and you think about each one is the soul. How important it is it for them to experience the love of God? Amen. Absolutely. And they were hungry. And so many of them are so, you know, poor and suffering and your heart just breaks. Can yes. you imagine how much more God feels? Because yes. you want them to know how special, loved and chosen they are. Like mm. every single soul God created and, and you know, designed the personality Absolutely. and they can be funny and cute and loving. And you want, you want them to experience the wholeness that we feel of Jesus in their lives. So, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm so thankful we get to to tell the world that you're chosen. You know, somebody said to me one one time, they said, well, wait, you know, you're just, uh, you're a Christian and, you know, you don't have room for for all these other people and religions. And I said, Mm -hmm. you know, no, no, not at all. I mean, I love them all and God loves them all. But Jesus, my Jesus, is big enough and powerful enough to reveal himself to all. Amen. And that's what we're seeing happen. Yeah. I had a lady that called me from, uh, that actually sent an email from Syria. Yes. Wow. And um, she, she, she was just in tears as she wrote, um, I had a vision of, of a man in right. a white robe. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and, that's common, yeah. And she <laughs> said, and I know that it was Jesus. Oh. And I, I wrote back and I said, how did you know it was Jesus? She said, I don't know how I knew it was Jesus, but I knew it was Jesus. Wow. Wow. And I knew that he loved me. Yep. <laughs> and he's, yep. and she just said, it just changed my life. You have to hear that wow. testimony over oh. and over. Yeah. Absolutely. We had a man who was actually an emir in a terrorist group. And that's wow. a prince. Wow. Yeah. And the long story, I'm not going to get into it now. Now he's working with us, reaching, uh, he was ISIS emir, I, ISIS prince. <laughs> Mm. And the man now is an evangelist. Oh my God. You see that all wow. the time. It's, it's the most amazing it's thing. So Tell us quickly, if you can, Dr. Yusuf, how did you come to know the Lord? What is your salvation story? Mm. Well, you know, my ancestors go back to first century wow. Christianity. You know, the apostle Mark came and he actually found some believers in Alexandria who came to Christ on the day of Pentecost, Jewish 
pilgrimage who were in, and you see that in the book of Acts, from Alexandria and Libya. Wow. And so they came in and they brought the gospel, but they were struggling. So Mark, as you know, was a, uh, was a constant uh, tension between Barnabas and, and Paul over Mark, John Mark, because he kind of backed down and didn't go with him on the mission field. Anyway, so he wanted to prove to Paul that he is, so he goes to the toughest place, Alexandria. And he was martyred in Alexandria, so it started the Church of Egypt, the Coptic Church. And uh, so my ancestors, you know, 85% of the population uh, in Egypt was Christian between uh, the year 50 to the year 670, when the Islamic invasion came from Arabia, and then their forced conversion. But to this day, there are 15 million of us in Egypt mm -hmm. who are Coptic Christians and Egyptian Christians, so we're Coptic meaning Egyptian. So I grew up in an evangelical home, loved the Lord, and my brothers were very successful, were bankers and business, and, and I saw at their great life they're living, and I come along and it says, um, you God call you. I said, I'm not going to ministry, that's, that's poverty, and I'm not going there. And so I rebelled. I thought if I become a damaged goods, God can't uh, use me, but in reality, a long story, on March 4th, uh, 1964, I gave my life to Christ. And a long story again. And believe it or not, that even though her health was not very well, all the years I've known her, 16 years, she was not in good health. But she died in July of that year. And now that my son knows, she's I'm ready to go. And she, sure enough, she died that July. Wow. And so the, I began to think, of course, and I said, Lord, and, you know, whatever you were, I remember the place where I was staying. It was a Christian bookstore. And I said, Lord, wherever you take me, whatever you want to use me, I'm yours. And sure enough, a few months later, I was escaping with the clothes on my back uh, in 69. And uh, I've been amazing journey, amazing journey, uh, training in ministry in Australia, ordained in Australia, served in Australia, and came to California in Atlanta, Georgia. And so, and pastoring a great church, I've yes. driven by it on yes. the way there yeah. and seen a beautiful church. Could you have ever imagined that no. God would use you in such a way no. to share Absolutely the love of God? Not. Yeah, no. it was. Uh, we started with twenty-eight people. Yeah, and I was before that was heading a parachurch organization globally. I was traveling the globe, I was preaching all over the world, and campuses and cathedrals and. And God said, now I want you to plant a church. I said, Lord, I go from <laughs> global ministry to a little church in Atlanta. So told a few friends I'm going to start a church. 28 adults showed up with their children, and, and we started. That was the first day. Mm. And God just kept leading and leading. And he kept saying, trust me, just trust me. I'm going to make this ministry more global than you've ever seen. Mm. Mm. And everything I've done, from radio to television to, all, all, you know, it was basically God opened the door, and he pushed me in it. It's not that I wanted to do this and I have an ambition to do this or I have a desire to do this. I mean, I became, I came on television because a pastor in Chattanooga, Tennessee, First Presbyterian Church, Ben Hayden. A lot of people... I remember him. Uh, yes. But you remember yes. Ben Hayden? Yes. <laughs> he walked into my office, literally unannounced, except he called halfway through, so I knew he was coming. <laughs> and he said, do, does the name mean anything to you? I said, Ben, I've known, you blessed the community of Christ for many years. He said, here, two and a half years, God has been telling me, telling me to give you my television ministry. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I was stunned, and I said, you know, can, can I pray about this? He said, that's your problem. I've obeyed. He said, I try to go to other people, but every time I go to somebody, uh, something happens. So I'm now, I'm now obedient. And, um, and so I ended up on television. That was your, that was your entrance into, <laughs> you know, Susie, you know that people watch us from all different backgrounds. Yeah. And um, I think one of the most important things we can do is share, um, you know, what Jesus means to us personally. Mm. Because, you know, a lot of times we want to put him in a box and say, oh, it's Jesus is for this group or this group, this group. Mm -mm. Jesus is for everyone watching. Mm. And what is he, like, what, what's kind of um, in your heart right now to share with people, no matter what their background is, about Jesus? Um, I would say that Jesus, um, he, he, is, he is God, he is ruler, king of kings, lord of lords, but he's so personal, closer than your next breath, that when I was in a place in my life where I was, you know, like how the prodigal came to his father and said, I, I, your servants eat better than you. Yeah. I was so full of shame 
like walking away from God when I was in college sure. that I literally was in the pigsty and I wasn't good enough yeah. to even go and say I'm I I, yep. I repent. I was so so low. Mm. And he came in his grace because he saw my heart and he pulled yeah. me out. He pulled me out. I didn't even go to him. Yeah. So I just want to say if you like I was all those years ago, if you feel like you're in that pigsty right now, mm. too broken to even ask for help, if you just say Jesus I need you, help me. He will come, he will pick you up, clean you, mm. and fill you with his Holy Spirit and, and take you into a life of adventure, of amazing things for his glory, mm. and you will never live the same again. I have lived it, and you will live it too. So just call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Cindy, amen. 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 And you know, I, I was really feeling in my spirit that people that are struggling, like you talked about earlier, with anxiety mm. and fear, so overwhelming, I believe if you would just take this moment right now and ask the Lord Jesus, just like Susie said, mm. to come into your life, to forgive you of sin, mm. to bring peace and comfort and to take yeah. away the fear, mm. that is the kind of God we serve. Yes. That is the price Jesus paid that your fear could be gone. Amen. And the Bible does say, he whose mind is stayed upon God, mm is kept in perfect peace. And I believe that means when we mm -hmm. keep our mind on the bigness of God yes. and who He is, mm -hmm. He brings peace bigger than our circumstances. Amen. That's so Absolutely. good, that's so good. Y'all said the word several times here. I thought Pope Kendra will join in with me and Cindy, but <laughs> said that song, this is your moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The presence the of the Lord, Lord is here. This, this is, is your, your moment. moment. Mm -hmm. God is yeah. here. This is your moment. He's here to set you free. This is your moment, your time of victory. That's the song I wrote yes. back some time ago. But I really feel like like there's somebody watching right now, and this is yes. your That's moment. Right. Whoever you are, just know that God loves you. We are out of time. Mm. I want you to remember it's important to remember that we talk about the end times to stir hope in you yes. and build trust that God is in control. That, some of you need to hear that. Mm. You're like been so concerned, but I'm just telling you, God is in control. Yes. We are securely in his hands and nothing makes that more apparent mm. than knowing the person of Jesus and what he had to say about the last days. If you're watching today and you want God to show you your purpose in this time and season, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We have wonderful prayer partners that are standing by. I know sometimes there's an entourage of calls as we show this. And uh, so if you do happen to get a voicemail, leave your name and number and a real person will call you back. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Michael Yusuf for pleasure. joining us at the table. Uh, you definitely want to pick up a copy of his book, Is the End Near? It's available now. And to find out more, you can visit him online at ltw.org. Very simple, ltw.org. Also remember to join the conversation online by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We love hearing from you. I want to thank you for watching and I just tell you it's burning inside of me. I feel like God is saying, Joni, I want you to keep sharing the love of God Amen. with people. I want you to keep sharing the message that I love them mm. and that I am calling their name and that I am reaching out for them and that I want to have a personal relationship with them mm. like they've never had before. You believe that today, receive it. Many of you sense the presence of the Lord right there where you are. Just begin to thank Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for coming into my life today. I'm excited about that. Thank you so much for watching. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.